Welcome peeps! In the last video I focused on presenting somewhat of an unknown gem from Suzuki's power cruiser department. 1200 Madura is a sweet bike indeed, but wouldn't it be great to show some comparison footage with mother of all power cruisers genre? Sit down, relax and enjoy this cool little video we've got for you. Ok, so similarities between those two bikes can be spotted by everyone. Both were built in Japan in the early 80s, both were meant to be fast and technologically advanced, they weigh near the same and they're targeting the same audience. It is enough to look closer though and we see that Suzuki approached their project slightly differently. Riding those bikes back to back further unveils the differences. We spent a few good days riding those beauties trying to cover full variety of riding conditions which included city crawling, open road cruising, highway cruising and even some aggressive riding in empty areas. Having covered a fair amount of miles and swapping bikes every now and again, we could easily make our minds on what the strengths and weaknesses are. So let's start from the riding position. For someone who is a sports bike enthusiast, this would be a weird concept to grasp. Because both bikes are cruisers, so they both have the cruiser's riding position, right? Well, to a certain degree that's true, but you spend two hours in Magna saddle, then jump on the Madura and you'll immediately spot massive difference. Magna's handlebars are narrower and slightly higher, with a distinct sporty feel. Madura's bars are so much more relaxed than the cruiser type. Seats are also soft and very nicely padded, but again, in Madura's seat, you feel a tad more leaned backwards. To make it easier to understand, I'd say that you sit on the Magna and you almost lay on the Madura. Both positions are great and comfy, but still noticeably different. Which is better, you may ask? 100% matter of preference is the answer, although it is a bit harder to hang on on the Madura when full gas is given. We call it a draw here. Handling will largely depend on the condition of tyres and suspension. Our bikes had nearly new rubber and seen fork service within a year from this session, so I guess it's fair to try to assess this. We both agreed that bikes handled fairly well considering their age and weight, but due to more relaxed riding position in the Madura, it naturally prefers dignified ride. None of those bikes will eat corners like a race bike, obviously, but perhaps Magna has a bit more bias towards spirited cornering. If that's even a thing in a 40 year old cruiser, of course. Talking of brakes, however, it is a clear winner here without discussions. Magna takes the lead here, hands down. I really did all I could to bring Madura's brakes up to par. Rebuilt the calipers, put the new pads in, rebuilt the master cylinder, added braided brake lines and properly bled the system. Improvement was of course noticeable, but Magna stoppers are still better. One piston calipers from Suzuki GM250 are simply too weak for this powerful and heavy motorcycle. 1-0 for Magna here. Not much point to discuss this really, just listen to those clips and make a decision yourself. Right, this is an interesting aspect of motorcycle ownership. Both bikes are shaft driven, which is sweet. Both have hydraulic clutch and three disc brake system, 
which requires fluid change every couple of years. Coolant change was about the same complicated and time consuming on both. Spark plugs can be accessed from outside without removing of any panels, but to access air filter on the Magna, fuel tank must be lifted. Madura's air filter is under the seat. No valve or setting is required on the Madura, and sadly periodic clearance setting must be done on the Magna. In ease of maintenance, Madura takes the lead. Okay, so this is the chapter everybody's waiting for. Which bike has more go? Which one pulls harder? Which engine is more flexible? Spec sheet says 1165cc in the Suzuki and 1098 in the Honda. On the other hand, Honda revs higher and does it somewhat happier. Honda claimed 116 horsepower launching the Magna and no solid details about Madura's power output as far as I know but the seat of the pants indicates at least 100 horsepower. But we thought filming a few nice videos here could help to resolve this once and for all. Okay, three, two, one, go! Okay, so once again, fourth gear. Three, two, one, go! And Padura takes the lead! <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Madura! Okay, fifth gear. Three, two, one, Go! <laughs> Alright, so this is going to be sixth gear now. Now two and a half grand on the tack. Three, two, one, go! And Magnav takes the lead. Let's try again. Three, two, one, go! Magna, 